What the fuck is Praxis? Practicing Theory Earl. My neighborhood engaged in mutual aid after the first shutdown that continues to this day, although now it's less since things in my state reopened. I got to know my neighbors better this way, and even found out one of them is an anarchist. But the good thing is that now if there's a blizzard, or another shutdown or any natural disaster, we have the infrastructure in place to start up again anytime. This last sentiment is what is currently turning me away from state-organized socialism into anarchism. Always had this vision in my head of neighborhoods being of actual use, and whenever I discuss it with people they just call me utopian. Anarchism, however, is the natural human organized response when there's no oppressors, and this anarchism gets the most out of neighborhoods, utilizing the resident skills in an intuitive and rational fashion. Think what you want about neighborhoods, but growing up in a neighborhood myself where people were friendly with each other and organized both practical and leisurely with each other, it truly hurts me to see massive blocks of urbanization where each human gets all of their commodities to the hundred steps of industrialization. Like say you want a traditional bakery food for a traditional holiday. It's becoming easier and smarter to buy in a mega chain that resides around the next block, instead of living at a spacious neighborhood where your neighbor next door is known to have fabulous homemade dairy with a personal touch. It's a dehumanizing process, but also literally destructive and irrational. Not to mention the inaccountability it brings through capitalist exploitation instead of communist self-sustainability. Do you think this would scale to city-sized populations so? And if so, wouldn't it then just be exploitation with a different name? I ask this because I lived for six years in a situation that was as close to my utopian dreams as I think one can get within our modern world, and we sourced as much as possible locally but still relied on some big box items. Based on this experience, and given that people are still going to want en masse, I feel like we will still have to rape the environment and exploit workers regardless of what we title it. Our population was about 25 year-round residents and it was great but not completely without difficulty. Now at city scale, it would honestly scare me to think about. Well there's an issue of urbanization in the world, an issue that was practically non-existent before industrial revolution and monarchistic empires. Economists are arguing we've transcended the Industrial Revolution, at least in First World countries, and monarchistic influence is only symbolical. It's obviously going to take some damn radical praxis to accomplish, but essentially we need to decentralize the world and begin ruralization. Through said ruralization and automation, we may self-sustain ourselves entirely within the 22nd century entirely without needing manual farmers and the like. This is of course also assuming that the world acted as a cohesive unit, and that the world was all politically aligned as anarchist. Also considering environmental concerns, with green energy. If this utopianism was accomplished, I do believe your big boxes would cease to be needed. Doing shit. More specifically, doing shit that's informed by theory. Not just fucking around without purpose. Shit like mutual aid where you provide your community with shit they need to survive, like fucking food. It could also mean fucking up some infrastructure or going to a fucking protest. Maybe do a fucking tree sit or occupy some fucking land. Thing to keep in mind is that theory and praxis are working together. It's not a fucking one-way process. Just like theory can tell us how, when, and why the fuck we need to do praxis, engaging in praxis is a way to test our fucking theory and modify that shit when it doesn't work in reality. I'm seeing a lot of definitions of praxis, but no examples, so here are a few. Striking is praxis for unions, the means to demand that workers' needs are met. Growing a community garden is praxis for reducing food waste and feeding your community without reliance on capitalism and big grocery store chains. Calling writing letters to your local government representatives oh is practice for changing the legislature that impacts you and your community. Praxis isn't always the most glamorous thing, but it gets the ball rolling for political change. When I got on the bus yesterday there was a pile of litter on a seat at the back of the bus. I'm not employed by the local public transit or waste management. But I live here, so I put on some gloves I had in my bag and carried the trash to the front garbage bin. No one thanked me, no one asked me to do it, no one paid me, I didn't want to do it and I didn't need to do it. But I decided on my own to do something to make things a little better even if in a small way. I feel that's an example of praxis.